Do you know, people come with wooden matches in hand, expecting to get a glimpse of the supernatural at the Screaming Tunnel in Niagara, Canada. On the other hand, you may order a drink with a human toe in Canada. Frightening, isn't it? Canada is the world's second biggest nation by area after Russia, comprising nearly two-fifths of the continent of North America. And despite its vast size, Canada is one of the world's least populous nations. With Canada's enormous size of 9.985 million square kilometers, it's no surprise that the country is home to many incredible discoveries, some downright horrifying. Stay tuned as we explore the terrifying discoveries in Canada in today's video. The Screaming Tunnel in Niagara Tunnels are standard since they're everywhere. Nevertheless, one tunnel in Canada is in a league of its own. It's believed to scream under specific situations. Not only that, but the tunnel has a tragic history. It's often said to be haunted by the spirit of a little girl. The Screaming Tunnel was built in the early 1900s, but as a drainage conduit to keep floods from washing away the railway tracks. Local farmers, on the other hand, exploited it as an accessible route to evade incoming trains. It comprises 125 feet of limestone bricks, but the moss and algae that grew on the porous stones just contributed to the eerie atmosphere. Why is the century-old tunnel supposed to be one of the most haunted roadways in the world? What precisely is the Screaming Tunnel story? Many legends contribute to this eerie tunnel at Niagara Falls. One horrible story is about a local farm catching fire with a little kid inside. She escaped and is alleged to have dashed into the tunnel hoping to seek rescue. She died from her injuries while in the tunnel, screaming in anguish from the pain of her burns. It's rumored that if you light a match within the tunnel at midnight, you'll hear that blood-curdling scream. This narrative, however, has few modifications. According to reports, her father set fire to her within the tunnel. What's the reason? A heinous response to a contentious divorce and custody struggle. Another account describes a young girl being raped and then having her corpse burnt as a cover-up. There are probably more, but they always conclude with the concept of waiting in the tunnel at midnight with a match to attempt to entice her soul out. Legends, on the other hand, are designed to be treated with mistrust. Although the story of the unfortunate girl is more compelling, there are few interpretations. One is that the young girl in these tales lived on a farm beyond the tunnel in the mid-1900s. She claimed to have been heading to her school bus stop when she took a shortcut via the tunnel. Tragically, she was hit by a passing automobile as she emerged on the opposite side. Her father came immediately when he heard the commotion, yelling down the tunnel as he hurried to her, but she died in his arms from her injuries. Dead Toe Sour Toe Cocktail Yeah, you heard that correctly. Canada is one of the few countries where you may order a drink with an unusual ingredient, a human toe. What is the origin of the Sour Toe Cocktail? It all began with a bad case of frostbite during Prohibition. The rum-running Lincoln brothers, Louis and Otto, were captured in a snowstorm in the 1920s. Louis drenched his foot after putting his foot through a piece of ice. Louis's right foot was frozen when the brothers returned to their cabin. Otto cut off Louis's toe with his axe to avoid gangrene, and to memorialize the occasion, he put the toe in an alcohol jar. Legend states that Captain Dick Stevenson discovered the jar and the toe in an isolated cabin in 1973. He devised the concept of the Sour Toe Cocktail Club, an elite club with just one membership criterion. Potential members must sip the famed Sour Toe Cocktail to win admission to the club. There is just one rule. You may down it. You may take it slowly. Yet, your lips must make contact with that gnarly toe. If you're worried about your safety, the hotel tells you that hygienic meat requirements make the drinks. Yukon's top medical officer inspected the cocktail and gave it a clean bill of health. And just so you know, any toe may be utilized as long as it's mummified by storing it on salt and serving it in 40% alcohol. Alien Sightings in Vancouver It has come to our attention that the Canadians report an average of three sightings of unexplained flying objects daily. According to the records, each sighting lasted an average of 15 minutes and had two witnesses. Witnesses have come forward. Some of them have been police officers and pilots. On the other hand, the UFO was allegedly seen at a baseball game in Vancouver, and there were several witnesses. Last week at the NAT Bailey Stadium in Vancouver, a game occurred between the Vancouver Canadians and the Everett Aqua Sox. According to the UK's Metro News, a mysterious item was seen in the stadium during the game. It was visible to the vast majority of the audience members. According to the article, 
a spectator captured the blue object on camera. The resulting video has received approximately 200,000 views on YouTube, with several additional admirers also tweeting photographs of the UFO. Also, the tale was covered by various UFO-centric websites and publications, but there needs to be a more sensational explanation for the sightings. In reality, it was only a marketing gimmick. The Space Center came clean and said it had staged the near encounter to hype up its $500,000 digital update to the Planetarium Theater. The so-called UFO turned out to be a drone in the form of the Space Center and was also shot in different settings, such as Deep Cave Jericho Beach and the crossroads of Barrett Street and Cornwall Street in New York City. The agency purposefully disseminated the photographs and videos of the sightings online. The strategy has been successful as the Space Center reported an increase in attendance of 65% with the installation of the new planetarium projection system. UFO Landing Pad in Alberta Canada is trying to entice extraterrestrial visitors arriving in UFOs, going so far as to construct the first landing pad ever designed just for such a craft. The efforts put in by the community to build the home of this world earned them a spot in the world's Guinness Book of Records. The landing pad is a tourist destination that has grown popular among those who wish to get an up-close look at the extraterrestrial craft and is found in the middle of a prairie near the town of St. Paul. In 1967, a suggestion was made to construct what would have been the world's first UFO landing pad. The structure would serve as a landmark for the community and, one can only hope, entice extraterrestrials to arrive there. The Federal Government of Canada responded to the suggestion on the day of the official opening on June 3, 1967. The honor of being named the Centennial Capital of Canada went to St. Paul. Almost 130 tons of weight are supported by the vast, level concrete structure that serves as the pad. One of the more fascinating additions is a time capsule scheduled to be opened on the 100th anniversary of the pet store's inception in 2067. A giant map of Canada constructed from stones from each province adorns the back of the pad and the central column comprises six concrete towers that are 75 centimeters tall each. Decades later, in the 1990s, a UFO tourist information center was erected to greet travelers. You may still go there today. Genuine images of crop circles, UFOs, and kettle mutilations will be shown to attendees of this event. Hence, if you'll reference a UFO, it would be good of you to point them to the landing pad in Alberta. Franktown is completely buried under rocks. Imagine resting happily after a long day's work one minute and being buried underneath rocks the next. Isn't it scary? Frank in Alberta, Canada was a small 600-person mining town, that is, until a mountain collapsed on it. On April 29, 1903, a 3,280-foot-wide, 14,000-foot-high, and 500-foot-deep block of rock separated from Turtle Mountain and smashed down into the village of Frank. It was the largest landslide in North American history, moving 30 million cubic meters of limestone, 2,300 feet, into the town. It took about a minute and 40 seconds. Fortunately for the population, the large avalanche hit primarily outside town, Unfortunately, around 100 people resided on the outskirts of town, right in the landslide's path. More than 70 persons were slain. Those that lived did so only by chance and accident. Among the stories of survival is that of Marion Leitch, a 15-month-old girl who was blown from her home by the tremendous air blast wave caused by the landslide and landed on a mound of hay that the landslide had carried there from half a mile distance. Others were three little girls who all survived even though their parents did not, and coal workers trapped below by the landslide. Instead of tunneling through the hard debris, the miners tunneled for 14 hours through 29 feet of coal and limestone to reach the surface. Although the avalanche surprised the locals, it didn't surprise the nearby Native American tribe, who avoided the mountain and dubbed it the Mountain That Walks. Because the hill was already unstable, coal mining aggravated the condition, leading to the avalanche. Soon after the landslide, Frank became a phenomenon and tourist attraction. However, by the 1920s, most people outside of Canada had forgotten about it. The slide region was designated a Provincial Heritage Monument in 1977, and a Frank Slide Interpretive Center was established in the hamlet of Frank in 1985. Although Frank has developed significantly since 1903, the south section of the old town still needs to be permanently occupied because of the possibility of another Turtle Mountain Fall. The Turtle Mountain Monitoring Project and Field Laboratory monitors the mountain. 
And we've come to the end of this video. Let us know which discovery in Canada intrigues you the most in the comment section. And if you like the video, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and turn the notification bell on for more exciting videos like this. Take care.